Hello and welcome to Platypus Scotsman. This is part two for the power plant. We're gonna go through the painting of this. And there's so much to be painted on this that I really just couldn't go over everything, otherwise this video will be forever. Anyway, just gonna kind of touch on some of the things that I did and hope you enjoy and here you go. So what I'm gonna do, because this is so much to paint, uh, I'm probably not gonna have a lot of uh, talking going on because there's just so much of it that the video would be forever. So I'm just gonna go through and do some base coats for now. This, you know, this is like corn red, uh, Lothar and blue. And this will be my base for my yellow, which is Amarillo and Sunset, and then I'll do lead belcher. My base for my white is gonna be like a mudstone, and then uh, I'll do different things like that. And I'm just gonna go through and pick colors and then start just painting different things and go from there. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. All right, after some thinking, I'm gonna go ahead and just wash the whole thing and then come back and paint it, uh, the different colors, just so I get all this initial done. Cause I think this is gonna to be too much of a pain in the butt if I don't do it this way first. So that's what I'm doing.
Just gonna kinda do a breakdown of what I've done. And because there's so much painting going on, if I was just to cover every painting on this, it would be forever as far as videos are concerned. And I need to fix that light. Anyway, so this is Avril and Sunset. And it's the base for the yellow. And obviously I forgot to paint that yellow. And uh, so what I did with the yellow is I just went around and I didn't do that one. Wrong yellow. I did this one right here. I just went around and did the yellow. And this is a terracotta. And let's see, do I have that color? Actually, it's dark goldenrod. It's part of my terracotta base, and that'll end up being tan. And then this is just iron oxide, brown. This is old gold. This is gray, hippo gray. And this is brown, hippo gray. And then just purple, I think. Where's the purple at? Right here. This purple is just Gene Stiller purple and old gold on these, old gold here, just white. Just, there's a, a, just a lot of painting that had, had to occur. The red I went back around with Evil Sun Scarlet just to brighten it up because I'm gonna darken it down. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and do shades on it. So I'll probably end up doing shades like this will get uh, sepia, this will probably get sepia or Agrax or shade. The red will get known oil, the, black, the gray will get known oil, the gold will get known oil. I'm gonna leave this alone for now because I think the blue I'm gonna do at the very, very end. And then the rust will get known oil and the yellow will get uh, sepia. I'm trying to see what other colors, oh, the white. I say the white already? White will get sepia. And I think that's, oh, the purple is gonna get uh, Juchi Violet. And I think that's pretty much it. So that's what I'm gonna go through and do and just start doing shades. I'm just gonna try Agrax Earth Shade right here on this. On this part right here, just to see how dark it is. Um, it might be too dark for what I want. Yeah, I think Sepia is probably gonna be the route to go. Which means I don't have a lot of Sepia to go around. The one thing I'm doing shades, I do want to get all the same area as right out of the right out of the gate. It's not like painting, I don't want to have to come back and do it again. Cause then you get those bathtub rings. And I don't want that. The one nice thing is because this is so dingy and gross and things like that. Not dingy and gross, but anyway, so just gonna be well used or whatever you wanna call it. It doesn't, I'm not really concerned if I get spots like this. It'll just add more to the oil, oil refinery look, even though it's not an oil refinery. <laughs> This is Drucci Violet, just gonna go around and now hit things with Drucci Violet. This is Known Oil, just gonna go around and hit various areas with it. Mostly the reds and the grays, I might hit other areas just to darken them up if I want. Oh, and the gold. Oh, and the brown, <laughs> the rust.
I'm gonna start dry brushing now, not heavily, just kind of, well, it depends on what I'm dry brushing actually. All right, what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna go around and put some uh, rust effects on it more. Just a little bit now that I've got all the shading done and all the, most of the highlighting, I'm just gonna go around and do some rust effects. Just use, just tore off a sponge that goes in a blister box and kind of just dab some rust here and there, especially around where I already have rust. I want it to kind of bleed off a little bit more. I don't want it to have a distinct crisp line. And this is iron oxide, brown iron oxide. And I want to try to avoid smudging or smearing. So if I have too much paint on it, I want to smudge it and smear it and I don't want to do that. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go around with sepia and known oil and just darken things up, put grime and things like that on there. Just to give it a more weathered look, I'm gonna go all over and I'll do it on multiple colors. I'm not gonna to be too discriminatory on it. Mostly starting with sepia, cause sepia just kind of gives that tint of grime and I've come to like that more. And also where there's some rust like this, I'm just gonna go a little bit further since there's spots. I'm gonna just go through, especially on the white, and dinge it up to where it looks more cohesive. Sorry, I have my window open. It's spring and I wanna enjoy the weather. And some of the oranges, that's a little bit too poppy, for lack of a better word, it just kind of pops too much. I'm just gonna go through and dull it with some of the sepia as well, so it doesn't just kind of ring, like jump in your face type situation. And by the way, I use terracotta and uh, 
raw sienna to go around on the rest as well and sponge it. And then I went, <clears throat> excuse me, I went around with some metal and did the same thing. And the other thing with sepia is when you're doing it, just kind of, you can go in multiple layers and that also gives it a better look too because then you have different gradation as far as the color is concerned and it's not all the same color. But you kind of get the idea. I'm going to go around and through this since there's so much of it. I'm not going to video it all just because there's so much and I would be bored if I was watching it. This is contrast paint, arithmetic blue. I think that's how to say it. And I'm just applying the, well, I'm just applying it to this blue right here, just to see how it is, and just go from there, see what kind of hue it gives. But I do plan on going back and uh, painting more of it. Oops. That's the only problem with this is it kind of dr runs down, and but there's probably gonna be so much blue uh, dry brushing for glow and different things like that, that it's not going to be that big of a deal. I've mixed some um, Outdoor Guard Blue and uh, a little black together to paint these up. Well, I want to paint this just because I want this, this darker because, I don't know, I think that's the route I want to go. And then have the inner ribs or the inner portions um, be lighter. Oh. And if I go over a little bit, I'm fine with that. I'm gonna paint all those ribs and I'm probably gonna paint the top of these two just to have them darker, just to have some contrast so everything's not all the same color. And then top of these little cone guys right here as well. All right, just a test on this, but it's um, Lothar and Blue. And I'm just gonna go through and dry brush mostly with this, just gonna give a, a blue hue to everything. And then I'll come back with different colors after that and not as exaggerated. But one of the things I just, I found if I go this way, which is hard for me to do it this way, but if I go back and forth and stuff like this, it, it tends to be easier in this particular area. I did this way before that first, and now I'm going the other way, but I want to get more down here too, because I want to, the blue glow to be a little bit more prominent down here. And I want to make sure everything was painted before I did the blue uh, dry brushing, just because I want the rust and everything else to have that blue hue on it. Okay, I've been struggling with this off camera for quite a while and get a little frustrated, but I've tried to go back with Ferris and Gray and do some dry brushing and it failed horribly. And then I mixed some white and some of the original blue that is Lothram, Lothram blue. I went through and uh, just did some, I don't know, some, I tried to put it in the middle in here and the best I could. For one, it's a hard, hard to paint the angle. I could have done an airbrush, but I'm trying to stick true to showing it on how I do it with a paintbrush or a canvas, not a paintbrush, but man, this is, I don't know, when I thought what happened in my head didn't happen in, on here. So I've done this, I go through and do this, then I put the white in there. And then I got some uh, Army Painter quick shade tone blue and I glazed over top of it. And then I did some known oil in the middle just to darken those ribs up which I think I'm gonna do it again, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use blue this time because I just wanna darken them up. And I don't wanna go all the way down with this mixture of white and blue, all the, oops, all the way down to the bottom. I just kinda of wanna feather it out to where it almost goes all the way so it kinda of gives a more gradient look. But still, this is just, just did not turn, I couldn't, what I thought in my head didn't pan out. And I've done stuff like this before, but I don't know. It just didn't just didn't work. Maybe I'm too rusty on doing this aspect of it. Plus part of it is too is these things are a pain where they're located, but that's not really a true excuse. The other problem too is I don't have a blue like this, so that made it more, a little bit more difficult. Not having the right kind of blue, so I have to mix it, then I have to add water to it so it doesn't go away. So I'm not using a wet palette. I probably should be using a wet palette, but I'm not.
Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you'll notice there's probably one major thing that I left out of the video, and that was the bronze color. I didn't include that in the video. The turbines, for whatever reason, were very frustrating for me. And I just, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I've done stuff like that. I've done things like that in the past. And I just couldn't, I couldn't do, I don't know. I just was having issues with this. And so I posted online it's to get what people, uh, some ideas, what people thought. And I also asked some friends and I was really kind of leaning towards going bronze or something to that effect. And um, that's the route I went. But there was a lot of frustration off of camera and I just didn't video because I kept changing, I kept doing different things. And uh, one thing led to another and it wasn't captured on, on camera. But I'm gonna end up doing another video probably to capture the process. Because even during the time I was doing it, I wasn't sure if it was gonna turn out because I was experimenting, doing different things. And I didn't wanna have another failure on video, even though I don't mind doing that, but I figured the blue was enough because I just didn't like the blue the way it turned out. And you can go on our Instagram page and check out the, what the blue looked like uh, when it was all done. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it, so I changed it to bronze, got that, got that color done, and um, that was pretty much it. Anyway, if you liked the video, uh, or you liked the channel, and you liked the content on here, I'd very much appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. So, and hit the notification bell so you know when videos are released. Also, give a thumbs up if you enjoy it and got, some, got something out of it, and leave a comment down below if there's something, if you have a question, comment, whatever. Be more than happy to, to answer any questions that you may have on this. Uh, project, but this, as you probably can already tell, this is part two, but there's not gonna be part three. I'll probably just do something totally different with the bronze technique and uh, just show that technique. Uh, Cause I, I, I would like to refine it, but what I did, I ended up in liking what I did. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna jump onto a, probably some uh, Borderlands style terrain. I still wanna do a backdrop of uh, a forest scenery. I need to do a forest scenery for uh, photo shoots and things like that, but I didn't go dingy on this piece because I didn't want to, I don't want to have more color. I also wanted to have time with my fan because the fan was green. And I want to have that greenish color for an industrial look. I want it to also be easier to cross over into multiple genres as far as games concerned like Infinity, uh, Reality's Edge, uh, Kill Team, things like that. I wanted to be able to have it in more than one genre and I didn't want to have it go totally dark and totally, uh, um, not necessarily apocalyptic, but just like, I don't know, my brain just lost my train of thought on that one. But anyway, you get the idea. I hope you enjoy the content on this channel and uh, appreciate the support for those who support. And I uh, uh, hope you get out something out of this and uh, have a good day and hope all is well. And and uh, hope you enjoy your hobby. And uh, remember what my mother used to always say, that everyone can do art. I truly believe that. Anyway, you have a wonderful day unless it is nighttime. And then have a wonderful night. See you on the flip side.